Friends, thank you all for being here. And uh, let me, without further ado, inter introduce someone who needs no introduction, President uh, Rick Levin, who has a special announcement for us. Well, wonderful to see all of you here on this wonderful celebratory occasion when I'm able to officially announce, as I did earlier in writing, the appointment of Greg Sterling as the next dean of the Yale Divinity School. Greg. We're so pleased to welcome Greg and his wife, Adrian, who's uh, standing at his side, to our community. And I know that you will all embrace them both as, as you are a welcoming and, and gracious community. And, and I, I know that you're looking forward to uh, his arrival. And of course, he, uh, Greg and Adrian are very much looking forward to serving you for the next five years. Greg is uh, currently the Dean of, graduate, uh, of the Graduate School at the University of Notre Dame position he's held for four years. Actually, he was the first person in that newly created position with oversight responsibility for graduate education throughout the university. It's, um, he's done a terrific job in a number of ways in increasing diversity within the school, in uh, providing um, career support to graduate students. It's a, a, a bit like we did here some time ago when we created an office of career services that allows um, students to be prepared for careers other than that in their academic field because as you know the markets are tight and sometimes it's useful to help your PhD students part way through or all the way through take the next step into some other area and so he's built a really excellent program in that respect. He's also done a comprehensive study of the different graduate departments at Notre Dame and helped to um, uh, help, help them to evaluate themselves and to, th and to think about improvements and reforms that they could make. Um, uh, Dean Sterling uh, is a native of the American West. He, he uh, grew up in both the, uh, in Idaho and California. Um, and he um, eventually earned a PhD at uh, the Graduate Theological Union uh, at Berkeley uh, in New Testament studies. His father was a minister uh, for 46 years. Uh, and uh, I noted, as I noted in my letter, his mother was something of a saint in the, in the city of Escondido, California. Um, and uh, on the day of her funeral, she, the, it was the, the day was named for her because of the work she did for the underprivileged in that town. Um, Greg himself has uh, preached regularly for 15 years or so in, a, in, a, uh, in, a, uh, in, in Indiana while he's served on the Notre Dame faculty, but he, did, he had a regular pulpit um, uh, in the town of Warsaw, Indiana, if I recall. Um, his scholarly work is, is in, it, it, growing out of his original training in New Testament and in you know, more languages than I can list, um, was on the influence of Greek and Roman thought on, uh, on both, uh, uh, both Jewish and early Christian thought, and uh, studied in particular the work of Philo. Uh, of Alexandria and the whole influences of Middle Platonism on early Christian and Jewish uh, thought. He's written numerous books, edited uh, uh, a, new, a number of important uh, texts, commentaries on Philo and other early Christian and Jewish uh, thinkers. And he recreationally reads about American history and likes to go to Civil War battlefields. So um, <laughs> got some American history fans. Um, uh, the, um, the, both Greg and Adrian from previous marriages have earlier, uh, have, have between them four children, the youngest of which is a, is a college senior, so they will come effectively unencumbered by family. Uh, but they look forward to taking up residence in the dean house, dean's house. Adrian actually uh, has an interesting family background. As I mentioned in my letter, her family had a family business where they made stained glass windows and installed them in churches. Um, throughout the region, she's returning to the Northeast, having grown up in uh, in Massachusetts and New York, New York State, and, and and later lives in Massachusetts. Um, we're we're very excited uh, about their coming. Uh, I want to say that when I did reference calls at Notre Dame, 
to, to, to get a feeling for Greg and how he, how he looked to the people who worked with him. Uh, it was just extraordinary, the, the outpouring of affection and respect that I heard for this man. Um, from president and provost to other deans in the institution, to department chairs, to, pe to people that worked in his office, um, people find him uh, a terrific colleague, a collaborator, natural collaborator, a person who checks his ego at the doorway and, and uh, devotes himself entirely to the task of service. Uh, and, and this strikes me as just exactly the kind of person who you've had as your dean and who, and who, uh, and who, will, uh, who, and who will make a great dean of, of this very service-oriented and very mission-driven uh, enterprise. Um, I want to thank the search committee, John Collins, the chair, other members, Teresa Berger and, and uh, Tom Trigger and Kathy Tanner and Laman Senna. I, I think, I'm sure the rest of you are here. Uh, sorry, <laughs> Lisa Tubbs, uh, Tisdale, and and uh, uh, I think I have a list. Nora, Nora I'm sorry, and um, and Bruce Gordon and Carlos Ayer, uh, Emily Bakemeyer, Abe Lee, staffed the committee and uh, did a tremendous amount of legwork to support it. Um, they did a great job of really reaching out widely and and giving us a really wonderful result. Um, I also want to thank the alumni who were, and friends of the school who were involved. We had a little advisory committee to the search committee chaired by Chris Sawyer, uh, who's chair of the advisory, the Dean's advisory board here. And we had representatives from the alumni, uh, alumni board, from the YDS board of advisors, and from the Berkeley board, uh, advisory board, all of whom participated in and gave input uh, to uh, the search. Um, my Remarks would not even begin to be complete without um, tipping my hat to Harry Attridge and to Jan uh, for their amazing service. Wait a minute, I'm going to give you more to cheer about. <laughs> so you all know uh, th that Harry's service to the school has been truly extraordinary. It, it actually began in a very serious way even before he was dean when he chaired the building committee during the time of the renovation of this facility. So everything you see around you bears the mark of Harry's meticulous attention to detail, his incredible discipline and, and logical mind that has applied itself to the decisions of this school for a decade now and, and even before in a way that is, that is uh, uh, you know, very reminiscent of the precision and detail orientation of his extraordinary scholarship. Harry is uh, a leader in, in every dimension, in scholarship, in teaching, in working with all of you, in taking the school forward. The recruitments to this faculty over the course of Harry's tenure have been nothing short of extraordinary. And the, and the, and the uh, stature that the Divinity School now has in the university, I think, has risen uh, substantially because of this, uh, this, uh, all these additions to the faculty who collaborate as never before uh, so smoothly with the Department of Religious Study, whose chair, Chris Hayes, is also with us. And uh, I, I just think in, many, in so many ways the school is in a, just an extraordinarily strong position thanks to uh, Harry's amazing leadership uh, and, and, uh, and his, his patience, his, his, his uh, warmth, his discipline, his evident uh, love of the place, it's, it's symbolized, of course, by his license plate um, <laughs> for YDS, uh, which we see driving around, driving around town. Um, th there seems to me to be only one way to properly say thank you, um, and that is to recognize Harry's remarkable leadership in scholarship and service with the highest accolade that the university can award. And so Harry, you are now a Sterling Professor. <laughs>
we'll have a chance for, I'm sure, at least one, if not ten, Harry Fests before the <laughs> semester ends. But right now, the focus should properly be upon our new dean, who I'd now like to call upon, Greg Sterling. Thank you very much, Professor, I should say President Levin, <laughs> as well as Professor. Now we're going to have a Professor Sterling and a Sterling Professor. <laughs> <laughs> Former Dean and current Dean. Uh, I must say that I consider this to be one of the greatest honors of my life, and at the same time a moment in which I feel humbled. I feel humbled because this is one of the most important divinity schools in the world. I feel humbled because of the people who have preceded me in this position, certainly my predecessor, whom you all esteem, as do I. I actually went to Notre Dame as an assistant professor, in part because of a couple of key senior faculty members, one of whom was Harry Attridge. Maybe I should just say another of whom was John Collins. Uh, <laughs> and it is absolutely wonderful to be able to follow in his steps, but I realize the bar that he has set and the levels of expectations that people now have for someone to serve in this position, and it is a humbling thought. I think the challenges in front of us give all of us some pause. We now live in what Tom Friedman has called in a well-known phrase, a flat world. The world is different. We can no longer think simply of Christianity. We have to think of Christianity among other religions. I hope that we can be unashamedly Christian without ever being narrowly Christian, that we will find ways to think of ourselves in a global context to make this even more welcoming, it, I know that it already is, but even more welcoming to people internationally and to have a greater presence of those people on our campus. We have a great challenge in front of us in terms of our own country. It's no revelation that mainline Protestant traditions have suffered significant decline. One in two have left those traditions in the last 50 years. The same thing could be said of Anglo-Catholicism, where 60% have left the Catholic Church in recent years. There is a great need to re-engage people, uh, to provide training for leaders who will be intellectual leaders within parishes and congregations to, to address and revitalize this great tradition that has given shape to American thought and to the religious experience of people in this country. All of those things make me intimidated or intimidate me to a certain degree as I think about this position. At the same time, I'm confident, and I'm confident because of the people standing in this room, because of the caliber of the faculty who serve at YDS, whose intellectual prowess and scholarship is justly acclaimed, whose commitment to the Christian faith is recognized, to the students who are here, many of you whom, in fact, most of you, I don't know. I do know a number of Yale graduates. I have three people who have Yale master's degree for whom I'm the dissertation director at present right now. So I've certainly seen the caliber of student produced here at this Divinity School. To the alumni who are so passionate about this institution and committed to it, 
it will take all of us working together. So to old friends on the faculty, it will be great to be with you again. To those of you whom I do not yet know, I'm looking forward to meeting you. I look forward to working with all of you. To the students, it will be a genuine pleasure to get to know you and to work with you, to teach, and to learn from you. And I look forward to working with the Alumni Association. I will say, I, I went to an event, I'll just tell this story very briefly, in which the head of our Alumni Association retired, and almost 600 people came to this dinner. And I, I said to the Executive Vice President of the University, I don't think that if a dean retired, 600 people would show up. And he said, oh, yes, they would. They would show up to make sure you retired. <laughs> well, here, Harry, clearly, by the reaction of the audience, they would show up to honor you. And I will do all within my power to carry on the tradition that Harry has set, uh, to give it my own stamp, uh, but to continue in that tradition. I'm very grateful to Rick, to Peter, uh, and to Emily for all that they've done. One of the things that impressed me about Yale was the quality, not only the ability, but the quality of the people who make major decisions in this university. And that's why I'm standing here today. So I thank you for myself and for Adrian, my wife, from the bottom of my heart. I look forward to working with you. We will be joining you in August, ready to roll up our sleeves and to collaborate with you as YDS advances in the 21st century. Thank you all very much.